Hey fourth grade, welcome back from spring break. It's time for spring week 11's art lesson, the 1920s. All right, before you begin, remember we're working on those four portraits, those four people, well, it's actually you four times. And so you need to have whichever ones you've been working on, whatever paper you have it on, you need pencil and eraser and coloring supplies. A refresher, your fourth grade expedition information. Your guiding question, how can I impact change in my world, community, and the school? Connection, we are going to connect our personal lives to history and imagine how things would change to you or to the area or to the time around it with you there. Learning targets, I can look for easy to draw shapes to begin to draw a human and I can draw a human with correct body proportions. In the design process, art is like emphasize. It is about making a personal connection to the subject. So it helps you understand and uh, relate to what to your problem or your situation better. So that's why art is empathize. We are about to get started on what is probably my favorite era of history in this. Now, I really like the 1770s and the colonial America area, but the 1920s is just the bee's knees. That's my favorite part. So let's take a look. 1920s, things are changing. Well, mostly for women. Guys, you still get your three-piece suits. Hats are back, but these times the hats look a little bit more, uh, they're bigger. They're not top hats like we saw in the 1860s, but these are more, uh, these are a little bit flatter, a little bit wider in the brims. Guys, your suits look much more like the suits that you know of today. Two colors though, I mean look, you've got some uh, brown and light brown, brown and tan, gray, blue bottoms, tan bottoms, dark, blue to uh, dark brown tops. So you can mix and match a little bit with colors. Ladies, oh my goodness, look at them. They are showing off their knees. <gasps> Can you believe it? How scandalous. This is the first time in the history that we've been watching or we've been looking through that women have short, quote unquote, skirts. This is unbelievable. At this point in time, the classes are getting a lot harder to tell apart. In the past, it's been easy to tell if you've been really rich because like I've said for women, you've had those really big skirts. Uh, if you are looking for someone today in the 1920s, you're going to have to look for the type of jewelry that they wear because a lot of people started to wear similar clothes. Middle class, lower class, upper class, everybody was starting to wear similar clothing. So we've got two types of dresses here, ladies. You've still got something around the head. like So if she was outside, she still had a, uh, a hat on. You can see that the hair is actually shorter. This is also something new. We've tried to, um, hair can be short instead of long. Some people are asking me about bangs last time and you will get to see that there are more of the uh, bangs coming up. Um, look at this one, short sleeves, both ways. Now she's still wearing gloves, still holds her, still covers her hands, but still. So these are some of the um, this would be kind of maybe our upper class. I said it's a little harder to tell because when you look at some of the other pictures, you're going to notice that they still look like um, the women who would you could consider in the lower class or the middle class. But the things that send them apart here, she's got a bigger hat on. She's got a feather in her hat. She's got this kind of jewelry around her dress. But still, similar. So these would be very... Um, and these could be very moderate women. They were uh, still, they were still uh, have long skirts, but the skirts are close to the legs now. She still has on long sleeves, but she's kind of wearing a coat. She's not wearing any sleeves. Her sleeves come down halfway down. She's got short sleeves. You can see their feet. Girls were asking me about that in some of the other classes. Well, what kind of shoes are they wearing? I can't see their shoes. Well, now you can kind of see shoes. We're talking about it. If you look, high heels are starting to become a thing. Now, these are all types of very fashionable young ladies. 
They have these kind of hats that are called a cloche, which is French for bell. It's like a bell shape. Not bell from Beauty and the Beast, but bell like you ring a bell shaped. Uh, again, everyone's skirt goes to their knees. And it's positively scandalous to see your knees. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think it's so funny. So, it, it really... There were some parents who would get so angry at their daughters for leaving the house dressed like this. This was like the height of fashion and it was the kind of thing they're like, oh, you are not leaving the house with no sleeves on. People can see your ankles. <laughs> Love it. Uh, now, not all people, not all girls decided that they wanted to wear the, out, the, uh, the, the girls' outfits. Some of them did decide that they would wear boys' outfits. This was not necessarily, this was kind of, it could be frowned upon. It was a little risky for a girl to go out dressed as a boy, even though really all she's doing is wearing pants. And these ladies on the right, who look like they're about to have fun, are in bathing suits. This is the kind of bathing suit that girls would have to wear in the 1920s. Guys actually wore similar ones but it's just hilarious to me to see that these were bathing suits and that was still considered so much of a scandal so these are some colored pictures oh by the way i should say this all the pictures that you see here are really people from the 1920s cameras were very easy to come by now lots of people had cameras and so you would get a lot more pictures of people around which is why we're also going to get to see more pictures of kids coming up so you can see here short hair was kind of the fashion for the young ladies maybe especially like with some of these uh, young women up here it was very short hair sometimes it was just kind of short hair like the women in the bottom picture and here's those women that have that that cloche or the um, the bell kind of hat and then Let's look at some of our very, these are some of the more snazzier men. These are some of the more richer, well-to-do guys. Again, some kind of hat, usually. He is wearing a top hat, I admit, I understand. Uh, but still, y'all have suits again. You have ties now. That's kind of new. I mean, you know what a tie is, but that was kind of a new thing then. Ladies, you could show off wealth by having on some kind of furs or if you see it, the jewelry that they have on. And kids. Kids were getting their pictures taken more often. Cameras, like I said, were easier to come by. And you didn't have to wait 10 to 15 minutes to take a picture. You could just snap a picture of some kids. So these are some of the examples of what some kids might be wearing or would wear around that time, as well as making kids, um, sometimes they just look like little adults. And then I have to admit, this is like my favorite picture that I found because he looks so angry to have his picture taken. I have a feeling he's going, Mom, I don't want to wear this. You know, something like that. I don't want you to take my picture. Now, to be serious, this is the time of World War I. And these are some American soldiers in World War I. You can see that they do all have a uniform now. Similar uniforms. These would be dark green. They have helmets. Their weapons are starting to look a lot more like the kind of weapons that we know today. Uh, men generally had these roles. They were the ones on the field. They were the ones on the front. But women were also in some parts of the in some parts of the army now. We've got nurses on the upper left. So again, if you were one of my ladies who's been interested in being a nurse. Those were, those were your outfits there. But we also had, on occasion, women who would help by uh, driving the vehicles, assisting in the camps. Sometimes they might actually be fighting. And you can see these were the women's outfits. So this is kind of the first time we got some women soldiers. So, oh, sorry about that. So now this is back to what we've been doing. If you're done with 1770s and you're done with the 1860s, go ahead and look at the 1920s and figure out how you'd look. 
if you need to get caught up and you need to be working on one of the other times, that's okay. We're not done yet. We're still giving these more time. I just wanted to introduce you to another time period so that those of us who got the chance, or those of us who are ready, could get working on it. And if you need to catch up on another one, now's the time. All right, guys. See you later.